Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of the Womanhood and International Relations Podcast. I'm your host, Natalia Bonilla. And for today's episode and YouTube video, we are connecting with Dr. Ada Alvarez Condes, um, dating violence expert and historian from Puerto Rico. Ada, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for the invitation, Natalia. Great to see you, to be with your listeners and to anybody that can see this video afterwards on YouTube. I'm so excited for our conversation today, Ada, because we are weeks away from commemorating the International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women. What actually happened in November 25th, 1960, which is a date that you know more of. Can you share with us the story of the Mirabal sisters? Yes, well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Um, one of the things I did when I did my PhD in history of Puerto Rico and the Caribbean, um, working with gender violence, was uh, dig in into the story of the Mirabal sisters. And the reason I, I wanted to learn more about it is it was because I learned that the 25th of November was declared by the United Nations as a day against elimination of uh, women violence. So to make the long story short, this there were four sisters, Dede Mirabal, Patria, eh, Patria a Maria and Minerva and of those four sisters three of them except Dede which is also important in the story and I'll tell you why later um, were very active in politics they were known for being sisters that were pretty and they called them the butterflies but interestingly enough the butterflies were their code or their name under the political arena so to give you some context, the dictatorship of Trujillo was going on since 19, 1930 and it lasts till 1961 in the Dominican Republic. Um, but the Minerva sisters get involved, especially Minerva, um, wants to be a lawyer and gets involved into learning about the dictatorship of Trujillo and wanting to take it down. She had encountered him in events um, she was approached by Trujillo at some point and she neglected it. Um, Trujillo was known for looking for girls around the country um, for whatever reason, you know, you understand like sexual or anything approaches. But before that, he actually was against his father's business. Like as soon as he learned that there was a bit of opposition in that house, he started going after Minerva's dad then he went after Minerva's case so she tried to be a lawyer and they neglected her the diploma then she had to do a speech or a letter saying that Trujillo was awesome or that you know the great Trujillo like it was all a matter of oppression however Minerva um, actually founded a party uh, underground party uh, with eventually like with with her husband uh, called Manolo Tavares and the sisters' husbands also were involved, so they they had guns. They had, they they were planned to speak out uh, against Trujillo and maybe taking him down. And that included flyers, that including having like guns, that included try to do like a, um, I don't know how to say golpe de estado. <laughs> Help me, Natalia. <laughs> Coup d'état. Yes. So. Anything related to like getting a bunch of people against the presidential house and then taking over, um, and that those efforts were were cut off. Like flyers went down all the street. They tried to, but it didn't happen. And eventually, Minerva with her sisters was in jail a couple of times. They said they were tortured, probably raped, but I know they were tortured. Um. So long story short, this happened. She is uh. Uh, part of the opposition and at some point they have their husbands the three sisters husband in one place and they're in another they let them go from from the jail and they want to visit the husbands but they change the husband's locations um so they have to go to a different prison so imagine you're going in one state but then oh no they're farther away um so by the time that they were coming back the Mirabel sisters were intercepted by a car and killed, brutally killed, 
um, the one that was driving and the three sisters were killed. And they put them in a car and threw, threw the car to make it look like an accident. A lot of people didn't buy it. And I don't think it was it was um, a mistake or it wasn't. It's very interesting that the Mirabal sisters are killed on the 25th of November, 1960. But in 1961, Trujillo is killed. So it, interestingly enough, he lasted 31 years, but the Mirabal sisters was like the a very aha moment um, politics where people already were doubting um, all that he said because he he really went after whoever was against him. So that's what happened. Um, now we know that they were killed at the moment. They were just saying that it was an accident and people didn't buy it. And foremost, I think one of the biggest things that I have studied as a historian and I have tried to prove and also involved in women in politics is that this killing, this this assassination um, was because of their figure as um, political figures more than being a woman. So it's very interesting that a lot of people were like, Ay, bendito, we're so sorry. He even killed a woman. Like they were so fragile and, uh, you know, I can't believe it. But at the same time, these were political people that they didn't expect that were women, <laughs> uh, sisters. And there was such a menace at some point, right, that they thought that killing them was taking them out. So you don't kill somebody that you feel doesn't have any effect on you. So that's something very interesting. And that's what we talk about on every 25th of November and also how we tell the story how do we remember it and how we tell it is actually I guess affecting or is working towards how we deal with violence so it's very important to know that thanks to this date of 25th of November we have a day to remember it's an everyday issue it's an everyday issue because a lot of women are killed and in abuse every day but is is what the UN declared so that internationally we talk about the reality of violence against women um, and how we talk about that and what do we say on media or how we reflect on this day or how we remember it is very important in how we handle violence against women so from of that we'll talk <laughs> very soon Yes, I would like to understand better the context of the Mirabal sisters and, you know, to give our listeners and our audience members um, more a clear idea of how they became political actors and why you say, for example, that their assassination was political, not only based on gender. Can you share with us a bit about how they became political figures, political agents, and, you know, how women can be perceived as such? Well, the first thing is that in a dictatorship, you cannot become a political figure. You have to be undercover. So they had an under, undercover name, like I said, the butterflies, and they had an undercover creation of a group to organize taking down Trujillo. So it's very interesting in history that even now, a lot of people just attribute or say that it was her husband um, just because they they feel it was a thing of like a male figure, but in also a lot of books and, and papers, it says that it was either Minerva alone or Minerva with Manolo. They do not, um, a lot of papers do not say it was only Manolo, which is very interesting because even, even on that, you see that people are thinking that probably as a woman, she wasn't capable of doing that movement or, or birthing it or right creating it. So again, they were political actors because when you're in a dictatorship and you have to do this undercover, you have to organize meetings, you have to un, um, organize strategics um strategies right and be strategic um you have to tell people whether you're trying to recruit people on your movement but at the same time you're being followed all the time so you have to be careful um like i said one of the biggest moments of minerva um was not only saying that she didn't believe in him like or or not she didn't act with reverence and that's what Trujillo didn't like about her First of all, like she didn't act with reverence. She was like, oh my God, this is a best man. Like a lot of people just were 
praise him through you and that's what he wanted so she didn't praise him um interestingly enough one of the things that we learn about history is that she received news from other countries so she was in somewhat privileged she was not poor and she had access to media from other countries so that helped her and literature from other countries she was really um literally uh, really um well raised and with a lot of culture in order to become a lawyer which was not you know that uh of a again on that timing <laughs> not as normal for a woman or not as common it was like a big thing but again i'm focusing on minerva because she was like the head but the sisters were part of it too anything related to like i said trying to get guns trying to do the biggest issue like i said they, they threw flyers at some point they threw flyers on the street like they sent messages of like people this is a dictatorship they're killing people who oppose the president they're disappearing people like do not like he was always like hi people love me everything is so well in the Dominican Republic so she was like one of the organizers of like this is bs like something is happening he's going after people who oppose um him like she was like a voice of her sisters and her husbands also and then the people of this movement um were the voice that said this is a dictatorship um so that's how it was a political that's how they became political and again i think it's interesting that in history we have seen this as an example of violence against women because it was brutal but at the same time we haven't paid we haven't given so much attention to the fact that they were very political or they were political figures so i would say um, and that's something i've studied if we tell the story of violence against women as in i bendito i'm so sorry for her this fragile little flower la 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 all this we are being machistas we are doing chalvarism we're saying they're so weak and i can't believe you killed a weak person you know you had to go against a, a not weak person but in this case they weren't weak even though people are people think like oh my god i can't believe he did it as if they were weak and fragile and right but it's the fact that they weren't fragile they weren't weak they were political figures and there was such a menace that someone thought that killing them will kill opposition and and that's what we have to check with the un dates and how we tell the story because if not we're not doing them right as in remembering them because first the 25th of november as the day against women violence and march 8 which is a day to remember women in work those women were killed in a, in a fabric just because they were looking for rights and if we use those days especially the 8th of march i've seen that more the day of like women day because they don't associated with women workers but like if they say woman day and november if all you do is repeat oh the woman and the flowers we want to celebrate women because they're so awesome <laughs> like, and they're pretty we're we're not doing what it was supposed to do with this state which is there is violence against women one of three women go through violence there isn't enough representation in politics the ones that are there also go through other types of violence, political violence. We have a situation that we earn less than men in, in the workplace. We have situation of disparity. We cannot be only seen as the weak, the fragile, and the pretty. And that people get mad that they hit us or they do stuff to us because they can't believe they did that or the one that i hear repeated the most which is everybody has a mother well being a mother doesn't make me worthy 
being a human being make me worthy of rights. And to end that up, I just want to sum up that Dede Mirabal is very important because Dede was the one that helped build their memory. So there's a museum in Dominican Republic. I went there. I saw the tombs of the sisters. I saw them and it was like an experience to see where they were raised up and the tombs of the sisters, um, which is like the museum, a house. And Dede Mirabal was in charge of raising all the kids of the three sisters. So there were like eight and two of them have tried to be their president or had a position in the Senate. They were, they have been, they have stayed political involved. Um, and it's because of the day that the museum went on and that it was, it was not only their kids were raised, but that the idea of telling the story that it was an assassination and not an accident kind of spread. Um, and lastly, I just want to say that of all the movies and all the, uh, this is a non-paid <laughs> ad, of all the movies and everything I have seen, I have to say this is my favorite of the Mirabal sisters, Tropico de Sangre, or I don't even know how they say it in English, uh, Tropical Blood, uh, with Michelle Rodriguez. I will check it out and post it down below in the description yes. box. And I also say that in this movie, not only is really the most realistic because they put her like as a strong figure versus the other one in the times of the butterflies where they kind of put that she gets crazy in, in jail. I didn't like that too much. Um, You also see the day. So the sister in the museum, you see it on the movie. So they, I, I got to meet the day Mirabal in the museum the day I went. And then now she has passed away. But for me, it was like, I can't believe I'm seeing the, right? Uh, so that was very important. Um, there are many things that you said that um, I want to touch upon. One of them is, you know, why it's easy to discard women as political actors or political figures. And you said so yourself, it comes from a um, patriarchal mindset, but also it comes from normalizing the oppression and the submission of women or the role of women um, in a society. They belong in the private sphere. They do not belong in the public sphere. And if they belong in the public sphere or they go to the public sphere and experience violence, then, you know, that looks for it because they, yeah, they... yeah, yeah, because they were not meant to be there. So yeah. um, that's one of the things that I invite our listeners and our audience members to start, you know, um, exploring why we think that way <laughs> about women. And secondly, I am interested in learning more how the United Nations uh, shows to commemorate this day. I think it's interesting because there's two things. The United Nations, I think, well, with the respect of the United Nations, I would love to help you. And I know Natalia too. Natalia is better than me to help the United Nations, so hire her. Um, we definitely have to say to the United Nations, um, please tell the political story. Please talk about the woman as political actors when you remember the Mirabals, even though it's okay to attach it to gender violence and to condemn it, right? However, the problem I'm seeing is that one thing is that commemoration of the date and the other one is how the countries remember it, how the organizations remember it. So I wouldn't blame too much the UN, even though they could do a better job at remembering the political aspects of the Mirabal rather than we call this day because of the death of the Mirabal sisters, like a paragraph or like a, you know, a bio and, and that's it. Um, but also to bring up the topic of how we have to change the narrative that they're weaker. Cause I don't think it's more, I think it's much more of an issue of weakness versus submission. Cause in submission, you're talking about a control power wheel. Like someone wants you submitted, but at the same time, you believe that you're supposed to be submitted or you choose to be submitted. And that's why we have to do all these campaigns to make awareness and like get out of there. And you don't have to, um, you're not less than, right? It's like a second class citizen. But the idea of weakness is more broad because it's not only on the domestic term, it's also on the political um, and the um, public arena thing. So if I am not a CEO, it's because you think that I am weaker than men taking decisions. 
if I am not, and probably I'm single and I don't submit at all. On the contrary, you're afraid that you're submitting to me because you think I'm weak, you know? So the weakness part, the poor thing is the mindset that we have to change because it comes from the idea and it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad thing to think that we have to take care of each other, right? Because there's also this concept of, woman needing to be protected or the role on men with women in the relationship dynamics one thing is we take care of each other as a team rather than i need more of being taken care of because that idea comes from the weakness the weakness mindset so what we're really having to change and that's what we really need to do with the un date is do not talk to me about being, and I do this as a historian. I am now a professor in the university where I studied my PhD in history, and I'm giving history of women in Latin America. And one of the things we have to check and we explore is that when we talk about history, we see the men heroes. We don't see the women as heroes in the making of history. Same thing with this political stuff right we see politicians we talk about the fathers of the nation the founding fathers we don't talk about the founding mothers we don't talk about the the again the ceos the presidents you know we're changing the mindset even in churches and you know i'm a chaplain this idea that what is my voice and if it's less of um, to have someone speak about what's important, the word, politics, the country, the business, and not being seen as weaker. And one of the things I've been explored this week, and I want to, this I, I actually been working this on myself and exploring it while I'm writing something I'm writing now, my, my new book, hopefully coming out soon is that I was talking about my political life because I ran for senator. And one of the things I write about is I didn't say this stuff because I thought you were going to think I'm weak. But I noticed that the reason you think I'm weak is because you say that I'm weak because I'm emotional. But then wouldn't I not be human if I didn't have emotions? Shouldn't we be aware of emotions and handle, like, we don't have to take out emotions. We have to manage them. But it's interesting how in women, we recognize emotions as assets for maternity and for partners, but we don't use emotions as a good asset to become better leaders to be aware of empathy of others' emotions, others' needs. And what is worse, we have built up a culture of violent men because they're not in touch with their emotions. So, because we tell them, boys don't cry. So, on the contrary, having emotions makes you stronger than weak. You just have to manage them. But this idea of being weak because I am a woman, because I am emotional, because I am, I have hormones, like dudes have hormone too, it's just testosterone, you know, like, because I'm a caregiver because of my body, awesome, but I didn't make it alone. I may be, I may bear it. I have that, like, to be a mother is a strong thing. Why were we seeing it as weak? Or how can we praise being a mother and all that our body does? And not understand that the same body, even it doesn't bear a child, bears other types of child, like projects and books and a company and a country directed, um, or, you know, if you're a president, like we birth all the time, men and women, um, we shouldn't say that one is weaker than the other. So I think the narrative will be like, why do you think we're weaker? And can we really come up with bringing up these stories of the Mirabal sisters and others as how they were strong. So we change the narrative. And in terms of politics, we definitely need to talk about the Mirabal sisters as 
not only women being killed, but women politicians being killed. In terms of the Mirabal sisters' uh, family, um, one of the criticisms that we hear from different experts on the field is that this wouldn't have happened or they wouldn't have become political actors if they didn't have or came from a family of money or you know didn't have access to education as many of them had uh, during those years. Um, one of the criticisms even within the Dominican Republic is that they came from a specific social class that uh, enabled them to have access to education, but also to these political parties. Um, Dominican Republic or Dominican women, some of them do not feel represented by the Mirabal sisters. Um, you that have been traveling to the Dominican Republic, that you have done several conferences on dating violence there and, you know, working on several projects within that country. Um, can you share with us a bit of whether they, the Mirabal sisters were representative of a society or, you know, where powerful or powerful political actors because they have access to those spheres? Mm -hmm. Well, um, my my perception when I've been there is that they do see them as heroines um, and more than critics. Like I've, I've heard more praise than, than um, being criticized. Um, I do have to say that there's a lot of, on the telling of the story, on the rep repetition of the story, there's a lot of people that have that Oprah thing mentality and they kill the woman and I have seen interestingly enough and this helped me as a politician um people kind of criticizing that they did this with having kids and I remember reading the books of the Minerva sisters and one of the things that they asked Minerva is like are you are you thinking of your kids like you're gonna what are you doing you know like shut up and raise them and you know don't get in trouble and I love her answer and it's one that I have said through all my life and I will keep using when I have kids which is for my kids I'm doing it like I can't leave them this country as it is so it's interesting that people saw the maternity as a reason to quit and she saw it as like no I need to leave them a better country um so that's very interesting in terms of the of the access of power and the money, I do understand the people that could critique that they had access, but actually I will praise that. And because of two things, number one, it is true that they had more education or access to education, or like I said, they had this news coming, news outlets and books coming. Some that were even prohibited that they got to read and whatever, because you know there was a lot of, um, I think that they prohibited because of the dictatorship. So they had some access to things from Cuba, things from Venezuela, things like they were talking about the countries in Latin America and the Caribbean um, or books, etc. But I personally believe that it's a good thing when people that have power identify with the powerless. So instead of staying in the comfort zone of having all this money and having all these things and the business, they decided to fight for a better country, regardless that they had privileges. And I think that's good. Because, for example, in Puerto Rico, we don't have many stories like this, but I did a bill that now is a law to commemorate women in politics, like the women in history of Puerto Rico. And one of the people that I put it there, and people were like, oh, it's Soria Solina Ferre. Soria Solina Ferre, there's a lot of politicians, but she is a nun. And this nun came from the most Millionaire families of Puerto Rico, which is the Ferrer. Owners of the newspaper, owner like a bunch of stuff, like millionaire. And she decided to leave everything behind, not only to become a nun, which obviously is for her devotion of God, but to create foundations to help poor people. So I think it's, it's a good thing 
when we come from oppression, which is like most of the leaders in the world come from oppression and from down, like from below when they go up and they have like the experience of sacrifice and all that, hunger um, and injustice. But it's also very good when someone that comes from privilege decides to drop the privilege to help people, even though they are not from that, they're not suffering the same. So it takes a lot of empathy and again, um, bravery to leave everything behind. Like Minerva could have said, I want my lawyer's degree and I'll do whatever and I'll suck up La Trujillo, Trujillo is the best. I want my degree, you know, like I'll do whatever and I will stop everything and I'll just get this marriage and I will keep my kids and I will have them forever. Ah, they didn't like all the family got like involved even the and the family got involved like it's interesting it was like you just want like they got involved so i understand that some people might think that it was better if she was poor but at the same time i am happy to know that this person who wasn't poor still got oppression from a dictator and still decided to risk her life which actually like we know cost her life for people she didn't even know or for people that she probably couldn't relate to because she thought of the country as a whole um, rather than her privileges. In terms of the Trujillo dictatorship, um, mm -hmm. can you share with us how it was the situation of women during Trujillo's dictatorship and after his fall in 1961, what happened with the situation of women in the Dominican Republic with the new administration? Well, the problem is that a lot of people, it's interesting how in history, a lot of people see progress regardless of the human rights violations. And I've seen that here in Puerto Rico and in other places. They're like, I know he's corrupt, but hey, we have a university. <laughs> it's like, I know he killed people, but we got a train, you know, like, or here, yeah, like Coliseum. It's like, I know he robbed, and there's like a bunch of people in the federal prison, but oh my God, we have a train, a convention center. Like, it's like, so I have to say that, and this is something very sad, but even today there's people in the Dominican Republic, and this is what I was going to say, I think I didn't mention it, that repeat the story of Manuel being the one, Manolo being the one that did the party and not necessarily her. There's some places where they praise more Manolo than her. But also there's people who really like to heal. And that's messed up because like he's a dictator, but then people have some discourse like, there was a Trujillo guy running recently, a family member of Trujillo running. So it's very interesting um, how people can be so in love with wealth and progress, whatever that means, that they override human rights. So I'm saying all of that because I can't say that there's specific laws that change immediately after Trujillo, but I know that with Trujillo, there were universities, there were, you know, some prosperity. They did some institutions of the government and people overwrite the fact that he killed people that were, oppo that were opposition just because of that. So some woman will tell you, oh, but we have universities or, oh, we, we had that. Um, but in terms of gender violence or gender topics, I think in the later years, like on the latest years, like I'll say 20 years, probably the time I've been traveling, I've seen a much more aggressive campaign on fighting against women violence or having women in positions. For example, I know there's a vice president that has to be a woman. I know there are positions like um, things that require that there's representation in some places like not only men like uh, balance political positions um there's still a lot of machismo because it's a cultural thing we have to fight um but i do have to say that i've seen the change of talking of gender violence as a bad thing that's that has taken more that has taken longer than normal like like it's a lot of people thought it was not a crime like, or we'll justify that based on how they report it on the news or be like, oh, if she did something, like it was normal. Like you have a wife, you beat her. It's like a normal, normalization. 
um, because of the idea of women being property or if she was poor and depending on the man, then they thought like he, she had to take whatever, you know? So this idea of possession or if I pay the bills, you you suck it up <laughs> um, is very interesting, especially in poor areas. Like I've seen a lot of machismo and a lot of things related to praising women when they're wives and mothers versus like as human beings more political action against women violence but at the same time seeing some gender roles being repeated being repeated um in other areas um so the breaking of stereotypes hasn't been that good stereotypes kind of like are there but you still i still see a lot of like they're pretty they're mothers we all have mothers like this this thing has been repeated even if they're in politics i'm just saying like even in politics even if i could be the prime the minister and i'll be like she's great and she's a great mother yeah and the like, romanticization of the feminine values yes. or uh -huh. you know That's thinking that you know the stereotypical version of femininity if they embody mm -hmm. it then they are good candidates yeah, yeah. or good yeah. people or yeah. you know like whatever um yeah there's a lot of work to do in that sense. And um, I would like to um, start focusing now on the November 25th date. Um, something that you were um, explaining to me was how the different narratives shifted from you know, commemorating the death and uh, the assassination of uh, the Mirabal sisters from political agents and how that you know, came, became an international news story on uh, you know, violence against women and how it has shifted throughout the years to something else. You said previously that you are seeing countries um, commemorating the day in different ways, not necessarily connected to the origin of the mm -hmm. milestone itself. Can you share with us from your perspective and from your experience, what are you seeing? What are countries commemorating in, in terms of November 25th and what needs to change? Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen in November 25th, I've seen more people, especially with the hashtag 25N, and there's 15 days of activism that go along the 25th of November. Um, the problem is that I don't see this as a government issue. Like, let me explain. I don't see the government, any government 100% committed. I see the nonprofits being the ones that are taking a stand on this so for example you would think that the 25th of november being a un day will have an impact on the government either policies or an agenda related to that and i still see a lot of people that work with this a lot of people that include themselves or work towards the date are because they see violence every day. So we have an issue if the only people who denounce violence are the ones that deal with violence against women every day. Because the point was to bring awareness to the people who don't know about this or who need to know that we have to be aware of this happening. So my problem with this is that I've seen a movement especially with the 25N hashtag and all that, especially in the 25th of November. March is like a whole lot of deal, like it's bad. And I'll tell you why it's bad. <laughs> but 25th of November has an issue. Is like the ones that work with violence against women have on their shoulders the awareness campaigns. But there's no plan to make an awareness, like a national awareness. So that's a problem because you have people who are saying, for example, the 25th of November, people are listing all the women that were killed. Could it be that, for example, governments feel that if they commemorate it too, you know, they are um, accepting or welcoming political actors, women political actors being dis dissident no, from their I policies? No, I don't even think so because... Even on this, like, 
when I'm they they don't even commemorate the Violence Against Women Day per se. They could do like an event, um, like a but I don't even see press releases. It's like, oh, we gave a conference because it's the 25th of November and probably the person asked for it. <laughs> so you understand? It's like, it's not like I, if I were president or in here, governor, governor, I would definitely use the date to be bold about policy and be like, this is an issue of every day, but today we're announcing this and this policy that is going to change or this one's for this or we're whatever. But what I see is like a bunch of people that are deal with domestic violence here, activists, mostly nonprofits, like remembering that women have been killed, asking for funds or money, like donations for the nonprofits, but not like a real national awareness of like even people here that protested on the 25th of November and in other parts of the world, you will see like, oh, I know a protest. Oh, no, there's traffic. You know, it's like it's, it's like a thing of being mad about protesting. And be like, oh, another protest. What do I do? We're, they're killing us, and there, there's violence. It's like, ah, oh, the same thing. Yeah, because they haven't stopped killing us and doing this. You know, like, so I've seen like an apathy of doing something with it rather than be like, oh, there's a day for this. But even so, on the 25th of November, there's more awareness than on the 8th of March. It's like the March 8th date, which is the other day related to women in the UN. Because the other one is like the girls they were. It's a whole different story that has gone bananas. Because it's like March 8th is the International Women in Work Day. But people have taken it as Women's Day. And then you have all this like celebrate women for being women. And then what is being a woman? And then you have people doing art with flowers and all these pretty things. And and say congrats to a woman today in your work and send them flowers and just for existing and it's not like dude we're talking about having rights and wanting to work and not pay being paid less and have like shitty like paydays and and being able to work even if we have kids and all related to not seeing us as weak workers because we take care of kids like it should be an asset like i'm multiplying the population like i'm bringing people to like and you're gonna punish me for bringing you know people like it's like a thing on the stereotype of being pretty weak and and like uh a garment it's like a or no come on like something pretty to put it like in a on a you know, like a trophy or like a yeah, like let's item. praise woman for being woman and you would see men even using machismo like that there's this in a day of men though everything is about what when do we have a day everything is so instead of <laughs> building like love love and equity and rights is kind of interesting how it has become like uh uh i am tired of this topic oh i yeah you're pro you're crying about your situation you see like a mockery yeah. of the protest etc so i know there's a lot to be done and there's people that are doing it right and there's and there's activities that are awesome in the communities i don't i'm not saying is something is not being done like even now this week there was a march a wedding march in dominican republic and here they do around the 25th of november a march with wedding dresses um, and that has been somewhat criticized because it's not that when you get married, you're going to be killed, but it was about a Dominican woman in the U.S. that left her abusive partner. Two years went by or a year went by. She was going to get married with another guy. Thank God she got healed. She found someone and the guy got into the church and shot both of them and she was in her wedding dress. So that's how the wedding dress march started and it was also a dominican woman and this was a couple of years ago so think about the dominican mirabal sisters being shot at and beaten up and destroyed jammed in a car and thrown because it was brutal and then this woman in her wedding dress in church being shot at and then a march of like i don't want to be killed by the person that says i love you because that doesn't make sense <laughs> that is not right so I have three last questions before okay. ending our interview. Um, one of them is connected to the date of November 25th. Do, do you think it is effective 
to commemorate this day? And if so, or if not, why? Yes, the, the answer is yes. And it's effective because as a historian, I have to say that we have issues with memory and there's a lot going on um, that we not only have short attention span now, <laughs> We, we have to commemorate or we have to, I am, I like using dates as an excuse to talk about topics and they could be the excuse to talk about a topic that in another day they wouldn't talk about. At least in Puerto Rico, I wrote a bill that February is dating violence awareness month and people are like, oh, what is a month do? What is, what does commemorating a day or a month in this case do? And I'm like, if it didn't have that, they wouldn't even do like an event. Um, and it's actually going door by door by door, right? Like, hey, this is important, this is important, important. So sometimes people would excuse that something pops up in the calendar. Even now, like there was Veterans Day, people remember Veterans. There's Memorial Day, people remember. There's whatever day. And they're like, it may sound stupid because we we have a lot of dates and whatever, but it's not stupid when it becomes a movement or when it involves people. And I, I have to say, and I like this quote, and I always repeat it, like, people shouldn't be afraid of the government, the, govern the government should be afraid of its people. But instead of using afraid, I will also say, like, the, gover the government works for the people. People doesn't work for the government. They, be they build up the, governor the government, but the government is an administrator of the public assets, but it's not uh, the patron or the owner of the people's stuff. So even though some countries have ignored it or have said it wrong or whatever, I actually don't mind because if there's a march today, like I was saying with the wedding march around the States, or if I in the university put the movie and make somebody open their eyes and like, oh, this happened? Oh my God. Well, I already made a change because one person, even talking to you, like you're saying, I didn't know about the Marvel sisters that much. Like you're making a change by talking about it i have another excuse and i have to say like i have a tattoo <laughs> that says mariposa in taino so i went overboard i went to say mariposa butterflies because of the Mirabal sisters but i made it on the native language of puerto rico so people are like what is that i'm like it's called butterfly let me tell you about the story of the Mirabal sisters <laughs> so um, at, and, and in terms of being a woman, now I'm going to speak specifically of being a woman, we need more examples of brave women and examples and inspiration of women. And due to the fact that we're less, the, our stories are less represented in history books, etc., we need to hold on to looking for people who inspired us. And as I always say, my students, and I say every time, and you know that I say this a lot, we are originals. We're not copies. So it's okay to learn about other people's success and other people's story to get in, inspired. But we, I don't I don't plan to be Minerva, even though I love Minerva's story. So it's an inspiration, but I always have to remember that I'm an original, not a copy. So I'm going to learn about Minerva and other women that I can get inspired of and use it and then become the upgrade and become the new version or give my own twist to it because I am different. And that's cool. And we have to deal with that because we can compare a lot with other people. And sometimes we're like, mm. <laughs> and we have to deal with that comparison that social media doesn't help with, but it will help us if we take the best of it. And we're like, well, I don't think that way. I will give it this twist. You know, or I will do it this way. So I have two last questions. One yes. has to do with how should we change the narrative of the elimination of violence against women? Like, what are your tips for all the women or all the different listeners and audience members that are from different parts of the world thinking, okay, I get it. Like, you know, we may be shifting the narrative. How can we stay on point? What are some tips that you could give us? And lastly, um, how can we follow your work and what are your yeah. upcoming projects? Okay, so good question. To eliminate violence against women. Well, the first thing will be on the 25th of November, use your social media for two things. Promote this video or the episode. You will be helping with that. 
and or write about the Mirabel sisters in your social media. Like, hey, I learned that the 25th of November is interesting because the root of it is that they killed three sisters that were politically involved and they even did like a party and they were called the butterflies and everybody thought they were like a synonym on a um, pseudonym, pseudonym whatever, of like woman, pretty woman. And it's all about like an undercover name, like agents that were fighting against a dictator. Wow, that's cool. You know, like, so bring the topic, bring the podcast up, the episode or the video in your social media and help help us get this get this out, but also write about it and you do the homework of googling it and searching the story or watching the movie as i said is really good um so to eliminate eliminate violence against women the first thing we have to do is focus on healing i would say that the first thing we have to work in is healing and i say this because we have to heal the the feminine side and the masculine side of it and the society like there's a lot of violence going on but in order to have peace we have to deal with healing what has caused us violence because we have to avoid hating ourselves and we have to avoid damaging our self-esteem and we have to avoid that other stuff damages our self-esteem that we believe these dynamics or that we believe these topics and that we actually feel that we're not worthy of wholeness and of feeling okay with ourselves and speaking up. So it is, I would say healing because I always say that for peace, peace includes denouncing injustice so as an activist i will say there will not be peace unless we call out injustices however in terms of self especially because violence against women is in a lot of areas work intimate partner violence etc cetera, etc cetera. media like attacking our bodies and saying you have to be thin you have to be this way wherever the best project that we can do to get a better self-esteem is do the work of healing all the violences that we have gathered and working on our self-esteem and our identity so that nobody dictates our identity um, from a place of unworthiness or weakness. So be aware of people who see you as weak or who tells you this. And I also have to say that to eliminate partner violence, specifically that which is something I work on, dating violence and domestic violence, there's more to be done on men too. Because I think a lot of the activists have had all the work. A lot of the women that are survivors do all the work. And then the aggressors are out there just looking for another victim. So we definitely need to also heal and work with the healing of aggressors and their recovery and the, oh. like, the justice being made to people who do damage, but also healing um, so that they don't do more damage. So a lot of people that are, that are damaged, damaged people. But people who are healed help other people and we need to change our narratives. We are not condemned to one or the other. We can change and transform. So, and I will say lastly, I will definitely want more women in politics and understand that there's going to be a position. But again, we need more, we need more heroines. We need more inspiration, um, but also we need more actions. So it's not about having women in politics only and representation is having women that know about women rights and defend women because one thing is to be a woman and run and another one is that you run and you're not dealing with human rights or being vocal about it and also women issues are the economy the environment so do not ever as an activist i know this i can be called to talk about domestic violence because i'm an activist on that but women issues are not only domestic violence so do not let yourself be put in a box that because you're a woman, you have to talk about domestic violence or being a mom or families or whatever topics that are stereotypical. And I think at the end, we just need to be teams, teammates and work together 
instead of rivals. So being an activist is good and I will always be outspoken on that. And I have to deal and I have had to deal with defending other people more than defending myself in some occasions. And I'm dealing on with that um every day and being vocal includes that like do the work and healing and how do I speak up and like how can I come from a place of worthiness of power um and that will change the world if we deal with ourselves and we invest on this we're gonna heal the world definitely how can we follow your work on social follow me <laughs> as Ana Alvarez Conde in like my full name Ada Alvarez Conde in English Ana Alvarez Conde in Instagram in YouTube I have a channel um there's several stuff in Spanish or English but um in TikTok I'm doing some videos Instagram too related to domestic violence like signs or anything related to amor propio or self love um I'm trying to do more English content, but at least on my Instagram, um, I do share English and Spanish content. So if you want that and Twitter, I I, I tweet a lot. So Ada Alvarez Ponda and be aware of all the events like on the 19th. Um, um, I'm doing a peace promoter program. I do. I train people to give conferences, but that will soon be something you can take online and probably in English. So please follow me to learn about this academy that where you can get online and get trained on domestic violence, dating violence, and become a speaker yourself and an activist. So be aware of that and just remember, remember the mid of our sisters, but keep fighting. <laughs> and if possible, look for the heroines in your own country to yes. learn their history too, because I think that's also one of the key takeaways of today's conversation is yes, yes it's important to commemorate Mirabal sisters but also look within your own country who are the women and what yeah, the memory, who made, made history. the history yeah and yeah. even who were like shut down you know because they are not remembered because of xyz why you know look mm -hmm. for that and you know um also keep in mind that you can become one of the women in history in your own country uh -huh in the future that for all future it, generations and it doesn't involve dying and that's important <laughs> people, think, people think that to be a heroine you had to die for the country yeah. that's that's not cool i understand that's not a wild thing know, but no. we change lives just by being vocal by doing our own healing so that we stop cycles in our own family um we are heroes when we become a source of peace in a violent scenario We are heroes every day and we don't have to be um, recognized in order to do it. So do not think that recognition defines your value. You have value already by being a person and you have a purpose that is your own. And every time you forget, remember this. And I have to involve faith because it's important to me. It's where I get my identity of being a woman of purpose. I'm loved. I am, you know. I have stuff to do here and I can be a vessel of blessings. So remember this finger or any other, but remember that there's no, there's no other ID <laughs> as yours. So think about being unique and being wonderfully made and in your own way with your own skills and your own weaknesses you are strong and you can do stuff so don't think that you're weak and even under your weak even your weaknesses can be used for good just don't tell don't let other people tell what are your weaknesses or that you're weak and knowing yourself will let you stop any voices that condemn you or put you down Uh, thank you so much for this interview and i look forward to learning more of your upcoming projects Thank you.